this one. I'll be right there. Paintbrush is pretty much dry. Get a new paintbrush. <laughs> here. I got them all wire wheeled down and we have um, the brake drums I'm probably not going to do because I need to do high heat paint on that and then I have some other parts as well that we're going to paint. I have done quite a bit already. I actually got the front axle painted here but that'll be in a different video so just mostly sick of making time-lapse videos of painting stuff so I figured I'd just do a live stream of doing this. Interesting. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments. I can probably answer those. I have it up on my screen up here, so I should be able to see your comments. Hopefully. Perfect. Make this full screen so I can see it better. Five people watching. Cool. We actually have people watching, so that's always good. <laughs> so, you know, I got my favorite paint here, and you just uh, glob it on, and it works really well. But at least it's nice and quiet, so you can hear me talk, hopefully. The video quality is pretty good, too, so that's nice. See, I got the orange fan on the engine done. But I just used some Rust-Oleum for that. It actually came out really nice and it looks exactly the same color too. So that's nice. So yeah, I wasn't even sure if I was going to take this front axle off. You can't even see the axle. The front axle is sitting right next to me here. I'll paint it up nice. But I wasn't even sure if I was gonna take this apart. Um, this restoration has kinda become way more of a restoration than I was planning on. I was planning on just kind of dolling it up and getting it all together and then selling it, but it, it's really hard for me to not make things right when it really just takes a little bit of time to make stuff nice, like painting this. It's really not that difficult to do, and it looks a whole lot nicer, so I just, I would rather make it nice, I guess. And this gallon of paint has painted so much, it doesn't take very much.
nice rainy day here, which it's warm, so it's been melting in the snow and stuff, so that's nice. But it's just been extremely wet here. <laughs> It's so muddy out when it does warm up and then it tends to freeze. I think it's actually supposed to freeze tonight and then we're supposed to get a little bit of snow later, possibly. But I'm really hoping we're done with snow right now. There's, it's pretty much all gone outside now. But yeah, it's just, <laughs> I'm ready for spring and summer, honestly. I just, I'm sick of winter. I get cabin fever pretty bad, so. It's nice to get outside and do something. Especially like working on the bridge, that was a lot of fun. I cannot wait to do more of that kind of stuff. I wanna get out and do something. Which when it's cold like this, like today I think it was 50 or so, something like that. Anyway, it's probably supposed to get up to around 50 today and it's pretty good to cut trees down in that kind of weather because you get kind of a workout, so you're probably going to be sweating and stuff. So with it a little cooler, it's kind of nice. But when it's raining, you can't really do that, so. I don't think you guys have said anything. I'm pretty sure it would have. Put it up there. Which I understand. You might be working, having on like a second monitor in the background so you can just hear me talking. That's why I'm trying to talk about something. I enjoy this. It's a little tedious, but it's also kind of relaxing just sitting here painting. And the instant gratification is really nice too because it just looks a million times better once it's done. <laughs> I can give you a little preview of what I painted there. I haven't had a video on this in like, I think it's been like three weeks. This will be three weeks on Sunday. So yeah, I've actually been working on it quite a bit, but I've once again been waiting on parts and um, the front axle has been taking a long time because I tore everything apart and then there are some parts I needed. And then I also decided to take it off and paint it and um, what else? Yeah, t painting every single part and cleaning it all up, that takes a lot of time. So I'm just trying to do it right, I guess. So, all right, I think the bottom there is pretty good. We got pretty much everywhere. This paint, once you brush it on like this, I know people say they don't like brush on paint, but it just levels itself out and it's just a nice finish. It, and it holds on really good. As long as you prep the surface good, it sticks really well. So I've always been really happy with it. I think I say that in like every video that I actually paint with. So whatever. <laughs> All right, let's lay this down. All right, perfect. Do this side here. And it really doesn't take much paint either. That's kind of the nice part about it. And on the jug, it said like, it can be kind of thick. It's a oil-based paint, it's pretty thick. But on the instructions on the back, it says basically just keep brushing it until it's the thickness you want. So you don't have to put it on really thick. And some of the parts, there was like clearance bits and stuff. So I actually brushed it pretty thin on there and it came out really nice. I'm very happy with it. You can actually make it look like almost like it was a spray paint on there. You can get it that thin if you really want to. And it's not that expensive either, which is always a plus. Budget restoration. <laughs> Quite a few. Well, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Hope you're having better weather than I am. Of course, if you're watching this, you're probably not. <laughs> I saw the 
Out east, they got quite a bit of snow again. And Colorado had a bunch of snow, but like Tahoe Lake, or no, that's in California. Like Tahoe Lake or something. It was like crazy amount of snow. It's pretty cool, but hope everyone's okay. <laughs> that can be a little much. But I was watching some videos on that because people are stranded. The government, for some reason, they just stopped plowing because it was too much snow. But then they left all the people just stranded there. I, I don't understand that. That seems a little crazy to me, but whatever. <laughs> That side is pretty good. Really don't want this too thick on here just because it's a spring, so this is gonna flex. So if you make it too thick, it might, I don't know, flake off or something. I don't know. This is probably gonna be the hardest thing to actually last with the paint, so this will be a good uh, test for it to see how it does. I'm very curious as to how it's gonna hold up. I'm gonna flip it over on the other side and see if we can. Do the other side. Get some paint on my hand real quick. Let's get this here. Oh, what is today? Thursday? Thursday. Yep. Now I'm gonna have a video edited for Sunday. I've just been videoing a ton of stuff and it's just a big, it's like a bunch of different videos that I've been, I think I have like four different videos I'm working on right now. It's a little ridiculous, but no, I think I did finally get one finished and I could probably make another one if I wanted to, but I don't know, I kind of like the longer videos, so I don't really want to cut footage down just to get a video out. I'd rather have a longer video with more content. But I think I am going to make a whole individual video on um, the steering gearbox. I took that all apart. I actually didn't have one that came with this FJ. I had to steal it off of the parts FJ. And it was pretty loose in there. Like the uh, steering wasn't very tight in it. It had a lot of play. So I tore it all apart and went all through the bushing or the seals and stuff. But the big problem with it is there weren't very many seals available. There was only one seal that I could find. And I bought that actually straight from Toyota, but there was only one available that I could find. So I replaced that one. So hopefully the other ones will be fine. <laughs> I don't know. But it is the one that's kind of on the bottom that leaks the most, so I'm assuming it's available because that's the one that always leaks. At least that's my hope anyway. Right, I want to make sure nobody's talking. I don't know if the scroll thing got stuck or something. I just want to make sure. Okay. Nobody's talking. We're good. <laughs> So I have that video and then I've been working on the front axle video for a while now, probably a few weeks. It's just been taking a while because there's, you know, there's a lot going on there and I want to like took it, take it off and do everything the right way. I got new uh, bearings and stuff for it and which there's, do I have that? I, I actually do have that sitting there. I grab that real quick, show you what I'm talking about. There's a bushing that goes in the end of the axle housing. It goes in the axle housing and it holds the drive shaft centered in there. So it's right there. Shaft. So it's this bushing. Hopefully you can see that, but it goes in the end of the housing 
and the drive shaft goes in there and it sits up there. It's like a thrust bushing, I guess, but it has uh, grooves in there for oil and grease and stuff to sit. But this, it didn't really get seized, but it was stuck on the drive shaft and it spun the whole bushing. So it wore down a huge groove on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you should be able to. But it wore down a big groove on there and completely ruined the bushing. Luckily, the surfaces where the drive shaft sat, completely fine. But, and this is brass and the housing in here is steel. So this is what got ruined. Luckily, I was able to find one of these. Um, I ordered off of Spectre Off-Road and it said on there that it's the right one, but it apparently the clearance fit is something you have to like actually make it fit your axle. So I'm supposed to be getting that tomorrow and then we'll see how that is supposed to fit in there. But hopefully we'll get that fixed. But that was kind of a big thing that was holding me up. I wasn't sure what to do about that. And then I was luckily able to find one. So that was good. But yeah, just one of the things that happens. Alright, that side's good. I'm gonna touch up the other side before I actually. That looks pretty good actually. Perfect. Just perfect. Alright. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, I might do a separate video on uh, rebuilding one of the uh, brake cylinders for the uh, front brakes here. Took one all apart and the funny thing was it was seized, but the um, little seal inside where the brake fluid pushes against, it was fine. Um, it was just the piston that seized to the wall. So I got that out and then I uh, just used a little wheel cylinder hone and honed it out. And then I did emery cloth on the cylinder itself and cleaned them both up. And now it works fine. So I did that to all four of them for the front. Hi from Sask, Canada. Well, hello, Bob. Man from Canada, you guys probably have some snow up there still, I would assume. So yeah, I might just do a separate video on that. I didn't really frame it to be a separate video, so the intro and outro might be a little weird, but I can always make something work with that. But it was kind of interesting. I've never actually rebuilt one of those before, and my dad happened to have the uh, Hone, the right size hone for it. So figured I'd give it a shot. It's way cheaper than buying all new ones like I did on my other FJ. That is a nightmare. They're so expensive and they, they're all different. It's just a pain. <laughs> but you can get like just kits where they come with all the ones you need and it tells you which location they are. But I've found that they really mark those up. Unlike Spectre Off-Road, they mark those up a lot. And when I did the ones on my other FJ, I actually went to Rock Auto and just ordered all the ones I needed separate and it was significantly cheaper. But I had to take the time to figure out which ones I needed and the right size and all that stuff. So you pay for convenience sometimes. But I have more time and I enjoy researching that kind of stuff. So I'm okay with doing that. But not everybody's willing to do that. Hi, Josh, Ted in California. My name is Jordan, but thank you. And hi, Ted. California, where about in California are you? Are you up where all the snow's at? <laughs> Hopefully not. But it's good that you guys are getting some snow out there. You get some water at least. That'd be good. Fill up the reservoirs more. Almost got this spring done. Coming together nice. Ooh. 
Uh, yeah, I was tempted to do more live streams, but honestly, when I'm painting like this, I like just blasting my music out here. So I get a little bored because I can't play any music because of YouTube stuff. So it's kind of a bummer. I like listening to music, but. Uh, sorry, we have emailed before. I forgot your name. Oh, that's fine. No problem. You emailed me? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't remember. I get some emails once in a while, but thanks for emailing me though. I hope I helped. <laughs> Not a problem though. We finally hit the 10,000 mark for subscribers. That's pretty cool. It's been a while, but hey, channel's still growing, so I'm happy about that. I know it could grow faster, but I'm not really into trying to make it grow faster, honestly. It's not my thing. <laughs> but it's fun that it's growing. Oh yeah, I believe I do remember talking to you. I can't... I'm sorry, I, I have a terrible memory. I really do. Um, was it about John Deere stuff, I'm thinking? I, I'm not sure. I honestly don't remember, but I'm sorry about that. I really can't remember anything. Ask my wife, she definitely knows I can't remember anything. All right, I think we're done with this. Looks good. I have one more of these to do and some other things. Let's grab the other one real quick, get it up here, and get it painted. <clears throat> Clean off my nice table. Make sure it stays clean. Yeah, well, it does tend to snowball. I think I've been averaging like 150 or 120 new subscribers a month or something. But if a video takes off, then it just skyrockets. It's crazy. When you get a video on the YouTube algorithm, it just it really helps. Um, there's some grease on here. I should probably wipe this down real quick. Need acid. started doing videos full-time or not full-time but doing them regularly with the uh, Falcon yeah. every like I would check my like channel stuff all the time and as soon as I would like I would even check it for like views on a video I'd be like oh somebody watched my video I still remember that it's pretty ridiculous but man it was such a big deal that yeah, just somebody random just watched my video. It was really crazy. I don't tend to see how many people actually watch videos anymore. I don't look at that. I look at the subscriber count more, but I also don't look near as much as I used to. I just try not to care about it as much because you can really get hung up on it. And it's not really good for your health, honestly. But when I post a video, I do tend to... Uh, check how it's doing more just because I want to know how the video is doing but and I have to like respond to comments and stuff like that so because the more comments you get I'm pretty sure that helps a lot with the algorithm
expert though. I really don't know what exactly does it. But I just act like all my videos get a million views and then it doesn't matter, you know? <laughs> Cause I'm sure that's what you gotta do. That's the secret. Act like you get a million views. grease. This one had a lot more grease on it than the other one. It's like the engine had a leak or something. It's really weird. I don't know how that's possible. These engines just don't leak. I don't know. Yeah. It's all right. The paint will cover all that grease right up, right? I'm sure. It'll be just fine. <laughs> it's gonna look good for, you know, like the first month. Once it's done, that's all that matters. The underside doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, it's not dirty right under there. First video I watched was you rebuilding a diesel engine in your garage and making it run. Yeah, the Perkins. Yeah, that was a good video. That video is I think the second best video that I've ever made. It has, I'm pretty sure it's well over 100,000 views now, which is pretty impressive. But yeah, that was a good video. Did you see the video of me pulling it out of the combine? Because that was the video prior to that. That video didn't get near as many views, but I had fun with that one. The diesel, getting that thing running, that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> it stumped me quite often. As long as you enjoy what you are working at, YouTube is just a boss. That's actually very true. And that's how this whole channel started. Everything you see on here, I'd be doing anyway. That's just how I am. This is what I would be doing. So I figured the whole reason I started is because I'm like, especially with the Falcon, it's a unique vehicle with the Toyota engine in it. So I'm like, people might want to see this. So I just started recording stuff. And yeah, I tried to just keep doing it. And yeah, everything you see on here, doesn't matter whether the camera is on or off, I'd be doing the exact same thing anyway. So the only negative thing about that is everything takes longer. Oh, my wife's on. I feel a little after for a second. Just joined, looks like watching paint dry. Pretty much, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm moving it so it can dry over there. You're technically watching me paint. You're not watching it dry, so, you know, it's way better. <laughs> I could turn it so you could just look at the parts on the floor, then you'd be watching paint dry. That'd be way more riveting content. Might be just as enjoyable though, you never know. <laughs> I, I seriously think they're scared to get out of the car. I'm not sure what's going on. What you doing? Okay. <laughs> not sure what's going on. Oh.
Thanks everyone for joining. It's nice that you're here. Hope this isn't too boring for you. Did you? Yeah. Oh, that word. I'm assuming it like hit on my ring though, so I have a little blister there. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. Can't be trusted with allergies. Try. Hmm? Did you try? Yeah. 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 Hey, you want to come say hi to people? You didn't just follow navigation or anything? I didn't have it on. Okay. All right. Yep. There was a sign that said right turn only. Of course. I turned left. Yep. <laughs> um, luckily, the street I turned on was blocked from the other direction because of all the hoopla. Yeah. Hoopla happening. <laughs> um, so I avoided going too far down the one way street because it was blocked. Then the kind police officer at, that we asked for directions kindly informed me that I was going the wrong way on one way street. It's crazy. He could give you a ticket. Yep. He was he was okay with it. <laughs> That's surprising. Okay. So then we got driving the correct way again. Good. And we drove much too far before Cooper announced he did not have his seatbelt on. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Check that one. Yep. So we had a really good drive home. Awesome. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and it's raining, and there's a lot of traffic, and it's windy, and mm -hmm. yeah. Good job. We struggled. So we had a discussion. Yeah, we did a great job in the car. Did you have fun? Yeah. Good. Did you have fun? Yeah. I got a back ass that's doing semis. There's a lot of semis? He was drawing semis. Oh, you're drawing on semis. On this piece of paper. Nice. That was really good. Mm -hmm. I got a two done, and now it's done on the, the last one. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I like it. Do you have lunch already? Yeah. All right. Okay. Why oh, yeah, it's almost three, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why don't you two go start getting the stuff out of the tent? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, this? Yeah, I was cleaning these. No. Oh, yeah, I look terrible. Oh. In front of all five people? Yeah. Oh, no. Here. That's the wrong side, probably. No, that's way about it. <laughs> Yeah, did that one first. 
first. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to go sit and recover from our adventure. Sounds good. <laughs> How about that? It's quite the experience. I've always been worried about going downtown down there that I was going to go wrong way on one of those roads because it's not the easiest to... Oh, there is a very clear sign. Oh, I know. right but... turn only, and I turned left. I know. I've always been worried that I would do that too, but I just, yeah. we don't go that far very often. So. No, we don't. Yep. Yes, for the five people, six people, I can't be trusted to drive in downtown Des Moines. We made it home. We yeah. survived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Alright, well, have fun relaxing. Yes. I gotta finish unloading the car first. Okay. What'd you get? Nothing. Just all our all the junk. Junk. Yeah. Sure. You thought it was scary watching me. Work on the bridge, huh? I thought that was fun. I don't know. It's not really that scary. It probably looks way worse on the video than it actually is in person, but I don't know. I've gotten used to it because I've done it so many times now. But with the front end loader on the Kubota, it's so much easier. <laughs> so much easier. See, I forget what I was talking about now. Probably wasn't important. <laughs> Just rambling. I do need to get all new bushings for these springs and the shackles as well. Because the shackles, I guess all but one of the shackles was uh, bad. The threads got messed up. I think somebody cross-threaded a nut on there or something. So I was looking at once again, Spectre Off-Road has a whole bushing kit for it, but with shipping and everything, it was like $200, so I kind of decided just to hold off on that for the time being. I'm going to have to get it eventually, but I'm just going to wait for a little bit. But it's all right. We can still get this done. We can, hang, we can put some bolts in there and just let it hang there without the bushings for now. We can add those later, but get this on and then we can pull the back one off and get it all done. So just getting with this front axle off, it just too many parts laying around. It's a little ridiculous. Hard to move around with all the parts everywhere. He's singing Imagine Dragons in there. Awesome. Oh, did a great job at lifting a large piece of the trees. Yes, it always does such an amazing job. It's kind of amazing, as long as it's working. <laughs> Most of the time it is, but. As long as the tires didn't fall off. Yeah. Yeah, I need to check those tire lug, or the wheel lug nuts a lot more often, I suppose. Never thought that would be a problem, but apparently it is. But at least it was just some lug nuts and not a 
hard line, a hydraulic line or something like it was before. Way easier to fix some lug nuts and some studs. is there to talk about. Oh, I might be buying another frame. It's a FJ55 frame. So, yeah, we'll see if that comes through. But it has an engine and stuff on it. But I don't know. The guy said it's outside. And the guy said that there's a lot of stuff around it and it's all frozen in the ground, I guess. So he said he couldn't really get to it at the moment. So I don't know what will happen. I just told him to message me once he gets it out and I'll come and get it. But who knows if that will happen. People on Facebook Marketplace are really sketchy. So it is probably better than Craigslist though. So who knows. And then I was looking at, uh, there's a gas tank on Facebook Marketplace for sale. But the guy's up in Minnesota, I think like St. Paul or something, and he won't ship it. But he said that we might be able to meet kind of halfway, and uh, I agreed to that. But he said he'll have to let me know when he's closer coming this way. So, once again, don't know if that'll happen either, but it'd be really nice because I do need another gas tank for this. But anyway, I think that's all done. How time flies when you're having fun. All right, next. What do we have next? Hmm. All right. We got this thing, which is the uh, front. I don't even know what it's called. The Pittman arm. I don't know. It's for all the steering linkages and it goes on the front and it like pivots and yeah, we have this to paint. <laughs> uh. All right, actually I should probably wipe that down a little too. So that, I don't know if you guys saw the update video for 2023, but um, I announced I was gonna make a shop out of the old corn crib. <coughs> Ugh, that's so really good smelling. Um, I was looking at it a lot more and it's gonna take some effort, a little bit more than I was thinking because um, there's no base plates on any of the walls. Like the studs come down and then there's like concrete 
and then they like put concrete around the base of the stud and there's no board going across the bottom. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's probably a lot cheaper, I guess. The thing was built in like 1906 or something. There's a date on it or maybe it was like 1911. But yeah, I assume it's probably just because it was cheaper, not having to use as much wood, but that's gonna make it real difficult to make stable. I was talking to my grandpa about it and he was saying he heard somebody that like lifted the whole thing up and then like they poured a new foundation or slab under it and then they you could put a base plate on it then, but I don't know how lifting up the whole thing, I don't know if that's even possible for me. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that would be pretty tricky, let's say. Uh, let's see, probably don't want to go too high there. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, it's gonna be way cheaper to fix that building up and make that my shop rather than the other option I was going to was just build a whole new garage up by the house here. But just the materials for that were gonna be like $30,000 because it's a residential. I would I build it to kind of match our house was the goal with that since it's gonna be right next to it. Excuse me. So, yeah, it looked nice, but I want it to look and kind of go with the house, and my wife also does. And to do that, I couldn't make the ceilings very high to be able to put a lift in. So that's annoying. And I really would like to eventually have a lift, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's just so much more money. Like the the cost of doing the other building is going up now too because there's a lot more I need to do and more materials I need. But I don't know. I still think it's going to be a lot cheaper in the long run just because there's a lot of materials there already. And I don't, I can have my lift in there because I can make it the right height and everything. Uh, let's see. Wow, the way the corn crib was built is amazing. Never saw anything like that. Yeah, they definitely had a different technique, but unfortunately they didn't build it the best. There's definitely some weak points and that's why it was leaning. I don't know if I ever went into why it's leaning, but how they built it wasn't the best. What's up, sweetie? Can I come and help you out here? Um, no, not right now, sweetie. Okay. Thank you. Um, what was it saying? Yeah, how they built it was not great. So the whole top, like where the uh, bins were for the corn crib, like where the corn goes, they were built, like you see the, the if you're looking at it from the end, you have like the corn crib here, and then they just had studs going up to it, but they needed studs going up all the way past it to make it nice and solid so it can go back and forth. But they just stopped right at the bottom so then those cribs could actually like move side to side and that's why it fell, or not fell, but is leaning. And having the elevator sticking in the side of it that's really heavy also was not great because that's another reason why it was leaning as well. Um, but they did use a lot of solid wood and it was built really solid. Like it could hold a lot of weight, but it just, yeah, not the greatest. Uh, still got the combine engine, figure out what you're going to do with it. I sold it. Somebody came and picked it up and they paid me, I think $1,500 for it. Um, but yeah, I did end up selling it because it just, yeah, I, I just didn't have a really good use for it. And I, I kind of wish I didn't because it was a good engine and I probably eventually would have found something to it. I was thinking I probably could have put it in one of these FJs. I thought that might have been cool, but I don't know. I, I just decided to sell it. I need, I didn't really need the money, I guess, but it was nice to have the money at the time. So I, I just didn't really have a good use for it. So it's gone.
unfortunately. But fortunately, I have 1500 bucks, so, you know, not the end of the world. For something that literally was pretty much garbage up until I got it wrong. Which I did have to put a little bit of money into it, but it wasn't a whole bunch. Maybe like 100 bucks or something. Maybe a little more, I don't really remember, but it wasn't too terrible. Yeah, I was going to put it, I was thinking about putting it in that uh, Ford truck that I had, the F-250, but I ended up just getting rid of the truck because it was going to cost a ton of money to get that going as well, and I have a lot of projects, if you haven't noticed, and I just had to be done with some of them. I did have a thought of making like a generator or something too, but yeah, it's just another engine I have to take care of. Change the oil on and all that stuff. So, yep. Almost done with this one. Brand new. So pretty. Alright, um, let's see, do I need to paint that? No. Alright, that's done. I'll lay this down, grab another piece. have any future videos of any repairs of the John Deere or are you done with it? No. Or yes, I'm sorry. I will have more videos. Um, in my update video, I actually mentioned that um, when I put it away, the transmission was locking up. The whole drivetrain locked up. Uh, so only like half of the gears would actually work or do anything. So before we're able to use it again. I need to pull it in the garage here and take a look at it and figure out what in the world is going on with it. I have a feeling that it's gonna be some worn parts in the transmission. And I'm hoping I can, for one, find parts, and two, they're cheap enough that I can actually buy them. So, yeah, it, yeah, I don't know about it. Well, there's definitely going to be more videos, though, if that's your question, or which it is. So, there's always going to be something to do on it, is the thing. And eventually, I'm sure I'll paint it, but I'd rather figure out all the problems with it first before I paint it, I guess. Makes sense to me, anyway. So this is another bracket to that uh, little arm up front. It actually goes on the bottom and holds kind of the bottom together and then there's a nut that goes on there. So I figure I might as well make it look good. Maybe we'll do a live stream of just tearing the tractor apart eventually. I thought it'd be good because I have two more FJs to restore. So there's definitely going to be more FJ videos because they really took on a lot with that, deciding to restore them all, but I definitely understand now why uh, restorations take so long and why a lot of people quit on them because there's just a lot of stuff that can go wrong and things that pop up and then you need money and then don't have money for parts and yeah totally understand why somebody tears something apart and then it just sits in your garage and you decide not to do it because you kind of 
just get to a point where you don't want to work on it anymore. And that's how I bought all this. I bought this all taken apart, basically. And yeah, the same thing. The guy bought it during the uh, COVID stuff. And he was going to like rebuild one with his son. And then just his son lost interest and he didn't want to do it himself. So his work also picked back up. So he just decided to get rid of everything. Kind of sad that that happens, but I understand. I, yeah, it happens. All right, that's a big part. Took a long time. All right, and this is the arm that goes to the other arm that goes to the other arm in the arm. Yeah, I'm gonna try to finish this. I definitely got stuck at one point though because I was at the point of where I needed to paint everything. And I just kept putting it off, putting it off because I wasn't sure whether I wanna spray paint everything or brush paint everything on there. And one day I just came out here, I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna start doing it. And then I started brushing it and it was just, it was actually therapeutic, I guess you could say. It was nice to just sit here and do this. So yeah. A lot of times you just overthink stuff and make it harder in your head than it really is. And you just gotta start doing something and it just, it all comes together, I guess. I get questions all the time from people about how do you do this or I can't like, like tearing stuff apart. Like how do you keep track of everything? It's like, not that hard it's just nuts and bolts like especially something like this it's so simple and it's basically built to be taken apart in the middle of nowhere so it's so simple <laughs> you really can't mess it up it i don't know i'm on some of the uh fj uh not forums but fj uh groups on facebook and stuff and see people all the time on there saying that yeah, it, it, I don't know. it's just funny. I, I don't know. Maybe I just, it comes naturally to me, but which my wife has told me too, that this kind of stuff is a lot easier for me than it is for most people, which I just assumed it was common knowledge, but apparently it's not. I joined late. Maybe you are already talked uh, about the Rust-Oleum, it seems to cover surface qu uh, quite well. There's specific Rust-Oleum like industrial farm. So this, I do love this paint. I use it on pretty much everything. I've used it on the frame. Um, I did not use it on the engine because I did a, a higher temp paint, I think, for that one. But all the axles and everything, I've used this paint. But it is high gloss, Rust-Oleum, professional. High performance protective enamel and it's oil based. So here I can show it to you. Yeah, you see it good. It's really good stuff though. I really like it. And yeah, you can get it in this gallon jug. It never goes bad. And just I get the cheapest paint brushes possible, and then just chuck them when I'm done. I did try the last one to put it in a baggie, but it doesn't work. Just get super cheap ones and then throw them away. A lot easier. But yeah, this paint is really good. It'd be great if they'd sponsor me. <laughs> Probably just sold them a gallon, a gallon of paint, so. Anyway, but yeah, rust oil is good. It, it really, it, the oil-based stuff too, it sticks really well. I really like that too. Good stuff. And like the spray on stuff I used for this uh, orange fan right here and it stuck really, really good. It's really good stuff. And I do, I do this end. But yeah, this stuff I did, I talked about it quite a bit in the beginning, but um, 
it can be put on very thick. Like when I did the frame, I put on really thick and it levels out like really well, even when you put it on thin. But the more you paint with it and spread it out, the thinner it gets and you can actually get it to where it looks like spray paint. Like you can get it super thin, but it covers really well because it's oil based and it's just, it's really good stuff. Really like it. I actually painted my trailer with this too. Whole frame of my trailer was this stuff. But yeah, I hardly have anything on this brush and I just keep covering stuff. Looks really good. Oh, we got it. Got it. Thanks, Jordan. Yep, no problem. How much surface rust do you find acceptable with the Rust Oleum? So most of the parts I am doing here, I take the wire wheel and try to get as much off as possible. Um, but quite honestly, it'll stick to anything. Like if you just blather it on some rust, it'll stick to it. But over time, it's going to bubble up because there's still rust under there. Um, I did my, the first thing I used this stuff was, ugh, terrible, cut that. <laughs> the first thing I painted with this paint was the rear axle in the Falcon. And that was years ago. And it still looks like if I wash it off, it gets dirty, but if I wash it off, it's still shiny and looks like brand new. It's, it really has held up well. And I did the same thing with all this stuff. Just wire wheel it, get as much off as possible, paint it on thick, and it really does well. It's probably not as good as like, uh, what's it called? Pour 15? Pora 15, something like that. Um, that stuff's probably better, but it's just super expensive and I'm not gonna spend money on that. I'm way too cheap for that. being a psychic here but yeah I longevity is the biggest thing like yeah it can look shiny for a day or two but if it's just gonna fall off then that's not very good but yeah my falcon it, it really stuck to it nice and it still looks good today and it's been at least three years since I did that so and that's a pretty good spot for where like rocks and stuff will get up there and chip it which I guess it probably has some chips in it I don't look that close but it still looks really nice when you spray it off so, all right, I think we're good here. I think we got all that done. Next part, we got a couple left here. Ah. So this is the rod that comes um, off of the steering box. That's the one that we just painted with the rod that goes on there. And then this, the little ball on the end of that one sticks in here. And then this runs to the front, I believe. Yes. Yep. And then there's a ball joint on the other end. So this is that piece and getting that uh, threaded part out of here was quite a pain, but I used an impact driver and it came right out. So that was good. All right. I don't want stuff pretty thin on this one as well because there's a lot of little intricate parts on here. We don't want to get paint in and cover up. So paint it thin. Here, I'll paint this one nice and thin and then I'll show you how it looks up close when I'm done. Just so you can kind of see what it how it comes out. A little bit on the end there. I put a new uh, grease dirt on this too because the other one was all plugged up. Probably could paint it too, but eh, it's fine. I'm getting some paint on it anyway, so it'll be fine. That was a boot over it and grease and stuff in there anyway, so. It'll be all right. Go down to about 
here before we get to the thread. We don't want to cover the threads up, I don't think. I don't think that would be a good idea. All right, those look pretty good. Make sure we got a little hole right there. But yeah, okay, so I got barely anything on my paintbrush for that whole thing. You can see, even up here right at the top, it's all smoothed out already too. Is it gonna... So yeah, it, it comes out really nice. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, let's see, we got this rock, we got paint. This is the rod coming from the steering box up to the front pivot thing, whatever you want to call it. I, I forget what that's called. I can't remember anything. Appreciate it. Okay, yep, we are good on the messages. I think this might be. Oh no, it's fine. Ah, pretty sure. Perfect. All right. Get some paint on here. Hmm. A little tricky to paint this, but. Anywho. Let's see what else is going on. How many days of tree clearing you got left? Got a good feeling to look at a clean field that was covered with trees. Yeah, there's probably quite a few days left. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot. I actually did do a little bit more that I didn't film. Um, I started on another part of the field that was kind of off by itself on the way far end. Um, but the trees on the other end of the field, the root system are all tied together and it's very, very difficult to get the trees out. And I don't think I've said this yet. I have been looking at buying a bulldozer or uh, a track loader or something along those lines. I haven't got one picked. I'm not saying I bought one or anything like that, but I have, it has crossed my mind because my poor Kubota just gets beat to death <laughs> going and ripping those trees out. I was thinking if I could just buy something like that, use it to clear the trees and then I could just sell it again. That would be ideal. I did find one that uh, had the steering clutches were bad, which apparently that's the biggest thing that goes wrong with them because almost all the cheaper ones I found, the steering clutches were bad. So I did look into replacing them on one of them just to see like what it took. And luckily there was a video of a similar model that somebody had done, but it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of very heavy parts that I don't know how I'd be able to work with, but I mean, there's, well, there's a will, there's a way, but anyway, I have thought about getting something like that and I'm sure people would love to see something like that on the channel and I would too. I've always wanted a bulldozer, but I think it's snowing now or sleeting. I think it's sleet. But anyway, yeah, I've always wanted something like that and I'm sure everybody would enjoy watching Something like that, especially like repair videos on it. A lot of people like that stuff. So maybe we'll see. All depends on lots of different things. So anywho. Thank you guys all for watching, sticking around for this awesome painting I'm doing. Um, getting down to the end here. Not as much room to hold on to. <laughs> um, yeah. We 
which I really want to get a cat, like a caterpillar dozer, wheel loader, or not wheel loader, track loader, but they cost a lot more, which maybe you're just paying for the brand, but I don't know, I feel like they are the best, but what do I know? I, I really don't know. I think the one of the track loaders I was looking at was um, an Alice Chalmers. I forget what it was called. I forget the model number now, but it was a small track loader. But done. Uh, let's see. Where can we put this? Um, let me lean up against this. All right, what do we got next? Is that it? We got that, we did that. We don't have any more painting stuff. I think that's it, for now anyway. I mean, there's always more to do, but I need to paint these drums. So I have both of these, but I don't know how hot they get. You'd think, like, brake drums, they probably get fairly warm. This paint is only good to, like, 200 degrees, I think. Something like that. Uh, where does it say? Oh, right here. Do not fly to surfaces that exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. So, what do you guys think? Will these get over 200 degrees? when braking hard. I mean, the brakes don't really work on these because they're drum brakes and they're not going to be powered. So it's a lot of metal there to, I don't know. I, I don't think they'll get that hot, will they? I really don't know. My Send it? Yeah, I like that answer. I wouldn't, okay. My sound crazy, a solid shaft, weed eater, and a skill saw blade with every other tooth bent up makes quick work of three inch or smaller trees. Well, you see, if I had trees that small, I could just back over it with the uh, stump grinder and it'll just cut them off. I've done that quite a bit. So yeah, I'll just use that if I'm gonna do that, which honestly, most of them are probably gonna have that. Um, will you video, will you video if you bring down the remaining of the remains of the barn? Yeah, I'll definitely video that. That video will do very well. <laughs> Sad to see it go, but it's mostly gone, yeah. I remember your video burning the old farmhouse. Yep. It may have the same outcome, unfortunately, because of all the bugs in the wood inside of it. It's kind of sad, but there's a really good chance that it might just get burnt, which I'm not gonna burn it as it stands because it's a much larger building. I'm gonna get on the ground and then pile up all the wood and burn it probably, but either way, it's coming down because it's there's no way to keep it up. Jordan, if we, if we only had a reliable economy, sad times are here. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know much about economy stuff. It, yeah, it's not great, but it could always be worse. <laughs> Tell you what, price of equipment and stuff has really gone up, even like cars and stuff. I was looking at, like salvage auctions the other day. So I was looking at buying some cars and prices for just junk is incredible. So I actually go to a, um, there's a towing company that's kind of not really close by, but close enough that I go there and they get cars, they tow cars into their lot and people just don't pick them up or they're crashed and the insurance doesn't want them or whatever. I don't know where the cars come from exactly. Some are like, uh, 
police impound cars, stuff like that. But every once in a while, they'll have an auction to get rid of all the cars. And all of the scrap yards and junk yards around here, all of the like people come to those and they'll put a minimum price on every single vehicle there. And the very first one I went to, like it was probably six years ago, the minimum price was a hundred bucks. So you could have bought a car for like $160 there that ran and drove, which was insane. I should have bought more, <laughs> but now just this last one I went to last week, I think it was last Saturday actually. Yeah. Last Saturday I went to it. There was a minimum on every single car, no matter it ran, drove, crashed, was non-existent basically $650 on every single one. It made absolutely no sense to me how somebody like, I, I don't even get the scrap price because I've taken two cars, three cars now to the scrap yard that the people were still there buying these cars and they only paid me 300 bucks per car. So I don't understand why they're buying them for $650 now. It, it's just insane to me. Hello everyone, congratulations on 10,000. Thank you, subscribers. And many greetings from Northern Germany. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. Man, what time is it in Germany right now? I guess I don't really know exactly the time frame, but man, I would think it'd be kind of late or early maybe, I don't know. But yeah, cool. Glad you're here. All right. Um, we got one person that said do it and another person that said don't do it. So. 50-50, do we have any more input on whether I should use this paint to paint these? <laughs> 200 degrees, who thinks these will get up over 200 degrees? Brake drums, anybody? I should just see if I have some paint, I guess. You know? Engine enamel paint, 500 degrees. thousand degrees. This is the one I actually used on the header. Do it, do it. What's the worst that could happen? Paint comes off. So what? Very true. It is 9.31 p.m. in northern Germany right now. Okay, so yeah, morning. Nice. Getting a start on the day. Do it, yeah, okay, yeah. Honestly, if the paint comes off of these, it really doesn't matter. You're not even going to be able to see them. So I could use this, but then I have to put a mask on and paint's gonna go all over my phone and everything else. So it's another good reason to use this. You don't have to wear a mask. You can barely even smell it. Good stuff. All right, let's paint it. That just means the live stream goes longer. So there we go. Oh, I forgot to paint. Ah. Oh, I probably should wipe that off a little bit, huh? I want the paint to stick. If it doesn't stick, then the heat won't be able to peel it off. What do we got? Uh, in your summers, they will get hotter than 200 degrees? No, well, no. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, the hottest temperature we get here is like, I don't know. It, it can get over 100 degrees outside, ambient temperature here. So I guess breaks, yeah, I mean, it's possible. I don't know. And like the other people said, it really doesn't matter if it, yeah, I'm not really too worried about it. They'll look really good for a few miles at least. And that's really all we care about.
Hi, Frederick. Hope that's how you say it, Frederick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will I get over 200 in the summer breaking hard? I mean, yeah, it's possible. You can always just drive into a river, though. That'll cool them down real quick. driving this 40 on the property or what are you going to do with it? I, the plan is to sell this one. Um, that was the really the only way I was able to convince my wife to originally buy all these parts. So I am keeping one of them. As of right now, I have four of them. So I definitely don't need four. The big problem is I don't have any of the gear that I actually want. So there is a chance that I'm going to sell all of them in order to buy one that I actually want. The ideal year for me is a 1967. And if you look back in my videos, some of my first videos are of one that is a 1967. And that was the first one I had. And it has a lot of unique things about it that I really like and 67s are hard to come by sometimes. I tried to contact the people that have the one, my very first one that I sold it, contact the people that I sold it to, but um, I have a feeling that I'm not going to be able to get it back. And the reason why is the guy that I actually sold it to passed away, I found out in searching for it. Um, and his wife, and I think he had four kids. I assume they have it. I did find their address by being creepy and trying to find out because I knew their name. I kept his name and everything and I had his email and I kind of knew where he lived. So they did move once but I was able to just kind of look at county documents and find out where their address was. It's really amazing what you can find on the internet. It's, it's really incredible. But anyway, I didn't have, I had his phone number, but I tried calling that and nothing came of that, which I, I mean, that makes sense if he died. Um, but it had been a while since he passed away and I actually wrote up a letter and sent it to the address just asking if it would be possible to buy it back or if they still had it because i don't know if they actually still have it or not and i never heard back um either his wife or maybe it just didn't get to him or they don't live there anymore or i honestly don't know what or why but i never heard from them so i still have the vin number for it so I will continue to search and if it ever pops up online, hopefully I'll see it in time to be able to buy it. But I assume that his kids are going to want it because I think his kids are probably getting to the point where they could actually drive. That's my guess. And there's a chance they just want to keep it to remember their dad too. And I, I totally understand that. So... I mean, now they've had it just as long as I owned it for, so I'm sure it's just as sentimental or even more sentimental to them than it would be to me, so I don't blame them for wanting to keep it. It's just a bummer that I'm not ever going to be able to buy it back, basically. So, it is what it is. But they definitely made more than one sixty-seven, so I can always find another one, which I actually almost bought another one. 
a 67, but the day I called on it, the guy had somebody coming to look at it and they bought it. <laughs> so it was a bummer too, because it was right here in Iowa and they took it back to Chicago or something. So that's annoying, but it was perfect too. It was like, it was all original, had a lot of the parts and it wasn't crazy price. It was, I think it was like 12,000 is what he's asking for it. It was well worth it, but I got there too late. So that's what happens. Uh, why did you sell the 67? Or hold on, uh, too far down. Are you just going to try it? Okay. I have a 76. I love it. They're fun to work on. 67 might be a little hard to find some parts. Yes. It's very difficult to find parts for them. That's why you got to find one that is complete. My 67, if you needed parts for anything, it was very difficult, but it was also kind of the fun of it was hunting down the parts and finding stuff. Um, the carburetor on that is very hard to find. I saw one for sale on eBay for like $600 because they're next to impossible to find. So yes, they're hard, but as long as you can get one that's complete, it's worth it. Um, I also like the vacuum four wheel drive. I know a lot of people hate it and it can be problematic, but it's kind of cool because all the stuff's on the dash, all the levers and not everything's on the dash and the floor is completely clear. It's pretty neat. Um, why did you sell it? Uh, I needed the money at the time, honestly. Um, we used the money to pay for medical bills basically. So we were paying a ton of money every month on these hospital bills because it was where my daughter was born and the hospital got sold after uh, my daughter was born and they told us that we had to make a minimum payment of a crazy amount every month in order to pay it off or they were going to send it to collections. And I didn't understand why they could even do that or how they could legally do that, but apparently they can just do that. And um, we started making the payments, but it, it was very high. And especially with my wife's student loans and all the other loans we had, it was just pulling us very thin at the time. And that was the only vehicle I had at the time that was paid off that was worth something. So I sold it. And <laughs> my daughter loved it a lot because I think she was about five years old, four or five years old when we sold it. And I think we rode in it like every day. Um, I would take her for ice cream in it all the time because I'm home with her all day in case you don't know or with my kids. And so at the time I had my son because he wasn't born yet, but we would just take it and drive uptown to go get some ice cream. and. Yeah, so the day I sold it, she was like bawling when the guy was like putting it on the trailer and I almost ran back out there and told him I'm not gonna sell it, but I just, I couldn't, I needed the money and it's just, it's a bummer. But that's what happens sometimes and move on and now I have four of them, so. <laughs> Things have definitely changed, that's for sure. All right, where are we at? Oh, what did you do? Kids these days want newer Jeeps, so you might get lucky. Yeah, it's possible, but there's four of them, so there's a chance his wife just won't sell it. Maybe she has a sentimental attachment to it too. I, I don't know, but who knows? I don't know. I also wonder if she even got the uh, letter because I put in there either way, if you want to sell it or don't want to sell it, just let me know you have it or whatever your thoughts are. And I put my phone number on there, email, and she has the return address, but I got nothing back. It seemed a little strange to me. I expected to hear something, but I don't know, being a single mother of four kids, I'm sure she's extremely busy. So I don't want to bug her too much. Maybe in a few years, I'll try again, but for now it's fine. Greens from Italy? Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, hi. <laughs> that's crazy, man. I had never thought people would be watching from 
that far away. That's crazy. But welcome to the stream. Nice that you're here. That's really cool. All right. We're doing real good on this. I'm just chatting away. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing here, but it's looking pretty good. I probably shouldn't have painted too much on this. Eh, that's fine. It'll be dry by the time we put wheels on there. Oh, speaking of wheels, I bought another set of wheels. Um, I don't have any of them. They're out in my shed. That's the Honda element, but um, I got another full set of five wheels that are um, the chrome ones from like uh, FJ60. Uh, I got another full set of five of those. It's hard to find the steel, like the older steel 15 inches, or I guess they're all 15 inch, but the older ones with the hubcaps, I can't find any of those, but the newer ones that are chrome, those are a dime a dozen around here apparently. I bought the set of five for a hundred bucks. That was a good deal. I couldn't pass it up, so I just went and picked them up. But yeah, but I only had two sets of four before. So now I have at least two sets of five. So that's good. And then I got some extras, but at least I have spare tire or spare rims now. But I think I'm going to end up painting some of them the uh, white color because I really like that better. But the white ones seem to be more rare and cost more. So I, I don't know what they actually came on. If those only came on the FJs like the 80s FJs or what, but the chrome ones are a lot more readily available, so. And the guy I bought them from, I don't think he actually knew a whole lot about them because when I showed up, it was his, like, warehouse was full of, like, shubby square body trucks, and he didn't really care about these wheels at all, which I'm pretty sure... No, I might be wrong, but I think they're the same bolt pattern as Chevy's, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I think you can still get the wheels with the hub from Toyota. Yes, you can. They're just very expensive. And I'm not willing to do them. Once again, I'm just cheap and I don't want to spend that much money. So, yeah, you can get them. And you can actually buy brand new ones that look like the original ones on here that are 16 inch and they still fit the hubcaps. That's a really popular thing to get because they there's a lot more variety of uh, tires for them, I guess. So, yeah. Funny thing about Toyota is they're making, they've started making a lot more parts for the FJs again, the FJ40s and other cars too. They're bringing back a lot of their parts and I've noticed um, looking at Spectre Off-Road, if you go to like, uh, what's the website? ToyotaPartDeals.com. You can look up any Toyota part on there, which they only go back to 1969 for the Land Cruiser. But just put in 69 or whatever year FJ you have, and you can see all the parts on there. You can actually still buy a brand new short block from them. Or I think, yeah, it's the block with the pistons, crankshaft, everything. You can buy the whole, is that a long block? I don't really remember. That might be a long block because it has all the internals in it. But yeah, you can still buy one of those from Toyota, brand new F engine. It's crazy. You can't buy the head, but you can buy the block, which seems insane to me, but pretty awesome at the same time. Does it make a difference between brushing or spraying paint on these parts? Um, no. Um, I just like this paint for one, because it's oil-based, tends to stick really good, you can put it on thicker, doesn't run near as easily. Still can run, but not near as easily. Um, I can breathe without a mask, and it's a little bit therapeutic, just sitting here painting. And I get to talk to you guys, so good deal but yeah not really any difference I guess other than those things <laughs> but yeah I just do one coat on all this stuff and it's fine I did one coat on the axle here like everything just 
one coat, that's fine. We can put it on nice and thick. Covers really good. But yeah. You don't even gotta put very much on your brush, a little bit will do. <laughs> So I did have somebody a long time ago um, message me about buying some parts off of my parts FJ. And I ended up selling him quite a bit of the stuff. And now I'm regretting it because I need him for this. So that's kind of a bummer. I wasn't planning on putting this one together. I didn't think I had enough stuff to do it. But after I looked at it for a little while, it turns out I do have enough stuff to do it. And now I sold some of the things I actually need, so kind of a bummer, but whatever. We can make do. I do have other parts that I can use, but they're not original to like 64 stuff. Because this is a 64, technically. That's the other weird thing about this one, is the title I have for it is for a 67, but the frame and the body, I'm pretty sure the body, yeah, it has to be so. The frame and the body are 64, and the engine is, um, I believe the engine is like 69, 68, 69, something like that. I don't remember exactly the number. I'd have to look at the number again. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different ones, but it's probably going to look like a 64 in the end because I'm going to do a soft top on this as well. I already have a soft top for it. I got that in my big cluster of parts that I got. So, and I have soft doors for it and I have half doors as well. I have so many doors, so many doors. <laughs> All right, I think that one's done. That didn't take very long. Of course, I'm talking the whole time, so. Yep. I'll see how fast I can do it. I don't think that's very fun. Let's see what else we got going on. So in my update video, when I was talking about the land, potentially we could inherit. I asked everyone, would you take the money, basically, or I guess I didn't really ask that, but I asked, uh, what was the first year they made these? Uh, I believe it was 1958, technically. But I don't think they started importing them into the U.S. until 64. I believe I'm correct on that. Um, so yeah, I kind of asked everyone whether I should, we should keep the land or uh, take a rather large sum of money. And not a single person said, take the money. They all said, take the land, which is kind of crazy to me. I don't really understand that. Because financially, or like even investment wise, it doesn't really make sense for me to take land over cash. Land all day. I know. Everyone says that. And I... So my thought process on this is the rent money from the land will barely pay for the taxes that I have to pay on the land. So basically, no income from the land. Even if it's paid off, like which it would be. It would be paid off land. So... Yeah, I wouldn't get any income from it, 
I would just own this land outright, which is a good thing to have, don't get me wrong, but I could take the same money and here in town, there's a house that would cost the same amount of money. I could buy the house, have it paid off and rent it. That would more than pay for the tax for the house because the tax would be roughly the same amount but I would have a lot more income off of it. So I just don't understand why everyone always says take the land. Is your land in a growing area that helped in my four years? It is, it has about seven to eight acres of tillable ground right now. And that's where the rent money would come from was that tillable ground I can get approximately $300 per acre rent per year out of it. So that's how much I would have to be paying in tax as well. So yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> and I, it'd be nice to have the land because you have to go through our property to get to that land. That's the only way you can get to it. And there's actually an easement through our property to give people access to that land. Okay, I meant are people waiting to live there and build houses? No, you wouldn't want to build a house there. Nobody would want to build a house there because it is very low land and it is uh, right next to the river and like, the same level as the river basically. So it actually already flooded once this year and that field got water in it. You can't build in it. There's no building happening. So yes, I can understand if a development could go in there. Yeah, that'd be a huge problem and I wouldn't even think about it twice, but that will never happen. you have water slash mineral rights on it? Water slash mineral rights. Okay, we don't really have that kind of stuff here for one. I can go out there and dig a hole if I want. Um, there is a river that runs all the way around it and I can pump water out of the river if I want. So yeah. I would say I do have rights to it, but it, yeah, it's not, that's not really a thing here. <laughs> We're very free to be able to do what I want, which is really nice. Specifically where I'm at, because I'm not in city limits or anything like that. I'm in the county, so I can build a like that garage or whatever building I want, I can build it. I don't have to get a permit for it. It doesn't matter. I would have to get like a permit if I wanted to put a new well in. There's a permit for that you need to do. Um, there's a couple things that are, need permits, but like electrical, I don't need to do a permit. I'd probably have to do, well, I don't know. If I did it myself, it wouldn't matter. I can do that myself. As long as I own the property, I can do electrical myself. So yeah, we're very free here, especially compared to like Europe or something like that. It, that'd be a nightmare there. The big thing in my area in Minnesota is leasing farmland for solar sites. But a sub station needs to be nearby. Solar panels. Solar sets. Um, hmm. I don't think they want to put solar panels down there because it floods. I don't think they want their panel getting washed away. Um, there's also a lot of trees around the edge. So if they're going to put up a lot of solar panels, they're going to have to like center them right in the middle of the field. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that would be an issue either. I could be wrong, but, and also it being a low field, they're not going to put a windmill there, which is very popular around where I'm at. Um, so yeah, windmills aren't a big deal. I don't got to worry about that. 
Which honestly, I don't really mind a windmill either. But. Um. The only real reason I would want it is I've always had an idea for a car racetrack. Now, I've had it in the back of my mind for quite some time. I've actually had a car racetrack out there. I have videos of driving around it, kind of. But I've always had an idea for a big one, and having that land would make it happen. Um, it would be a lot of fun. I really like driving cars fast, but it's hard to do that legally. <laughs> and there's not like an actual racetrack anywhere close to here. You can find like drag strips, kind of, but they also have so many rules and it's, it's just not even fun. You gotta wait your turn and I just, if I have the land, I just make it myself and then I could go out there and do whatever I want, whenever I want. So that's a reason for it, but not a good enough one because I can still make a racetrack on the 18 acres I have now. That's not that big of a deal. But, yeah. The only other thing about the racetrack, too, is it gets wet down there. So, in the wet seasons, like spring and, well, if it's wet in the summer or whatever, it would get too wet down there. I wouldn't even be able to drive around it. So, that's another bad thing about that, too. But, it would just be like a dirt racetrack. But it, it's a lot of fun. I actually have a car. I did a video on it, the Toyota Tercel. Um, I got it from Copart a long time ago, and I paid like $60 for it from Copart, which you also can't do anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it was kind of my track car, and it's still sitting out there. I haven't started it in probably a year or two, but I guarantee you it would fire right up. But... Yeah, that's my track car, and yeah, I really need to get back out there and do that again. I really miss that. Just going so fast. <laughs> I had kind of like jumps and stuff too, where you kind of go over this hump and then like down a hill. I'd go like 60 miles an hour over that, and you like get air, and it, oh man, it's so much fun. I just haven't done it in so long. The track out there is completely overgrown now. I've just been working on getting the trees out. I was gonna rebuild it because my goal was to put it around the perimeter of those fields out there where all the trees are, but I wanted to get the trees out first and that's what kind of led me to starting to get rid of the trees. And obviously I haven't done that yet. So that's why I haven't had my racetrack in a while. Because before it was going right in the middle of the field and it kind of packed down the field and now hay grass doesn't grow there anymore because it's too packed down. So I stopped doing that and I haven't been able to do it since. Love it when you burned an old farmhouse. Are you going to burn the barn? Probably. Probably. Yep. Just because of the bugs. Like it, there's a lot of good lumber in there, but it's not really good because of all the bugs that got into it and I don't know it, if you saw the video where I built that shelf with the old barn wood um, those boards ended up having bugs in it and I had to rip all of it back out I got it all put up in my office and all nice in there and everything and I had to rip all the boards back out they're actually sitting outside in the dirt and stuff snow right outside of this door here and yeah, I can't use them because there's just sawdust everywhere. And every day I'd vacuum up the sawdust and there'd just be more the next day. And you couldn't get rid of them. I tried poison and everything, spraying stuff on them and they just wouldn't go away. So I didn't want them to get into the house. So I just got rid of the boards. But apparently the whole barn is infested with them. So, yep.
Well, yeah. I don't know about the land though. To me it makes a lot more sense to just take the money. It really does. Although I probably could like plow it and plant stuff down there too. I don't, I probably might go make more money doing that, but I also already have enough land to do that already. So I don't need it for that either. And yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I just thought it was really weird that everyone said to keep the land, which I understand land, they're not making any more of it. So it is, uh, yeah, a limited asset or quantity of land. So, and for the most part, it does go up in value. So that's always good. I was telling my wife too, that if we kept the land and we got to retirement age and for some reason we didn't have enough for money to retire or something happened, I don't know. We could always sell it at that point and we would have a retirement fund then. But we would also have to pay tax on it too. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right. They're done. Look good. Hopefully they won't peel off. All right. Let's see here. I think that's all the painting I have to do right now. Maybe I'll do another stream once we get some more stuff to paint, because I'm sure there'll be more. You gotta do the rear axle still too, but I wanna get the front one back together before I do that. I'm not sure what video will be coming out this week. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this axle back together before this weekend and get the video edited because there's so much video to edit. Um, I might just do a video on the steering box and rebuilding that. I think that's probably the best option I have for a video this week because all of that should be done. So I'll probably end up doing a video on that, but the best advice I can offer is to do what is best for you. You know your situation far better than any of us do. Fair enough. Not that you ask for advice. I kind of ask for advice. It's fine. You can give me advice. I'm willing to hear ideas. I, I like hearing other people's ideas because believe it or not, I don't know everything. Some people don't realize that, that they don't know everything, but I definitely know that. You need to collab with someone to up your viewers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that would be nice, but it's, I don't care. I, I'm very, I'm a very introvert person. I honestly don't ever have a want to ever leave my property. I am fine staying here talking to my wife and kids and I am fine with that. Um, she makes me leave occasionally. So I do see people every now and again, but I did do a collab when we pulled the old farmhouse down with, um, what's it? Oh, burning dinosaurs is his YouTube channel, which he hasn't uploaded a video in over a year now. So I'm not sure what's happening with him, but he actually lives somewhat by me. So he did come over and he brought his buddy's six by six, uh, military truck and we pulled the house down with that. It was a pretty cool video. Surprised it didn't get as many views as I thought it would. Burning the house down got a lot more views, but yeah, that, I don't know about that, but yeah, I did a collab with him and it's stressful because you're, you're trying to like work with each other and like to upload a video. He needed more time to edit his. So I had mine edited and ready to go up, but he didn't. So I had to wait and I don't know, it's fine. And it's fine if he needed more time. Like I understand that cause he has full-time job and stuff. So I just, I don't know, the cult, collabing with other people is fine, but it can get a little more stressful, I guess you could say. It's just, I don't know, I like doing my own thing. But yeah, it would probably help views. It'd probably up my views a lot more if I got somebody with a ton of 
views, but it also has to be related to things that I do on my channel. Like I don't want to collab with somebody that does something completely different than what I do because they're subscribers. They may come to sub and subscribe to me real quick because that creator says they should or something, but they're just going to leave because they're not going to like any of my content either. So that's why I like organic growth. Um, if you like my videos and you want to subscribe, then do it. Like, that's fine. <laughs> but if you don't, then what's the point? Because you're probably just going to leave anyway. So I'd rather you not subscribe if you don't want to see content that I'm putting up. Like, I don't know. That's just my take on it. I like more authentic subscribers. <laughs> oh, yep. I did start a Patreon. I haven't actually mentioned this in any videos because I don't know, I kind of feel weird about it, I guess, because it's basically taking money from people for nothing, but it's kind of crazy how ads work and revenue works on YouTube because for every one person that watches one of my videos, I probably get like a fraction of a penny for every person that watches. It's such a small amount. Like if everyone that subscribed to me gave me a penny, I would probably make more money. Would it be a penny? I don't know. I think so. No, not that right. It'd be like 10 cents, something like that. I don't know. Because I get a lot more views than I have subscribers, so that doesn't really work. It would have to be like 10 cents. If everybody gave me 10 cents, I would by far exceed what I actually make on YouTube. And it's kind of hard. Every subscriber, not every watcher. But yeah, it, it's weird how YouTube works. So yeah, I started a Patreon. I link it in all of my latest videos, but I don't, I haven't ever mentioned it in the videos. But it basically, you can subscribe on there for a dollar a month, and it basically is just to support me. There's no added benefits or anything like that. And honestly, you don't have to. Don't feel like you do. It's fine. But if you watch my videos with like ad blocker, that actually hurts me in my revenue. Like I won't get ads from, or I won't get money at all from you watching, which is fine because it's, like I said, a fraction of a penny, but yeah, if you go on there and if you want to support me, that's fine. And if you want to use that blocker, that's fine. You can do that. And then, yeah, if you want, you can give me a dollar every month, but yeah, I just made it cheap. I, I don't even know how I get the payout from that. I've only actually had one person go on there and do that. Um, somehow they found it just by reading the description, I guess, but yeah. I don't know. I don't make a lot of money on this for sure. <laughs> I definitely spend a lot more time on it than I make. There was one month. So the one month that the uh, house burning down video went viral, I got a ton of views on it. That is the only month that I've ever gotten up to making minimum wage. That was the only month I made minimum wage for all of my time I put into the videos and the time creating the videos and all that stuff. I got minimum wage that month. It was pretty good, but every other month is, I'm getting paid like, I did the math on it once, I get paid like $3 an hour or something, if that, every month. Maybe it's less, maybe like $2 a month, or $2 an hour a month. But yeah, I don't know, it's interesting how all that works, but I try not to think about it, because once again, I just do this for fun, and I just, yeah, I started making videos because my kids are almost back in school full time and well, my youngest one will almost be in school full time next fall. And I've been debating whether I should go back to work or not. And I talked to my wife and she, we kind of both agreed that I, if I can make money making YouTube videos, then I don't need to go back to work. So that's why I originally started doing this kind of was to see if I could start making money by the time they went back to school, which my goal was to make $20 a month was my goal. 
by the time they were back in school, which hasn't even happened yet, and I've passed that by far, so. Yeah. Oh, uh, I missed something here. Um, getting Napoleon Dynamite vibes. Yeah? <laughs> My monotone voice just talking. I could see that. That's a good movie. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I think I'm going to call it there. It's been a nice little Q&A. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else to say. We got everything painted that we needed to. Maybe I'll do another live stream when I need to paint some more stuff. So thank you for watching. And yeah, thank you for the congratulations on 10,000 subscribers. But yeah, we will see you probably this Sunday. I'll have a video. So we'll see you then. Bye.